Hi everyone, this is Paul Salvet. I'm Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, I'm the general manager of VB eBooks, and uh, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of how to publish your eBook on uh, through Kindle Direct Publishing, which will get your eBook on uh, Amazon, which is of course the biggest eBook marketplace in the world. So uh, this 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 tutorial assumes three things. One is that you have uh, your eBook either in a, a Mobi or a DocX format ready to publish. Um, you also have a cover that is uh, about 2,500 pixels in height, and you also have a, a KDP account already. Now, if you don't have a Kindle Direct Publishing account, just go ahead, log into kdp.amazon.com, and they'll walk you through the process. It's pretty easy to set up. So, uh, what we're going to do first, we're going to go to Bookshelf, and then we're going to go Create New Title. Okay, and we're going to publish. Um, Edgar Rice Burroughs is uh, A Princess of Mars. I, of course, didn't write that, but um, it's just as an example. We're not actually going to publish it, but we'll walk you through the process. So the first thing is uh, introducing KDP Select. And uh, KDP Select, uh, when you enroll in that, it allows you to get into Kindle Unlimited, which is um, kind of a, a controversial subject. Um, what it what it does is if you go through KDP Select and you want your books available for Kindle Unlimited readers, um, you can't publish your book anywhere else, even your own website. So uh, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, this tutorial, uh, you know, to go KDP Select or not is a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial. But uh, if you want to go on it, you click here. If not, you just leave it blank. Okay, the first thing you want to do is the book name. That's the title. We generally recommend you don't make the titles too long because um, it becomes a bit unwieldy on the Amazon product page. So we're just going to do A Princess of Mars. Okay. Now the subtitle, that's if you, uh, that's very common in nonfiction books to have a subtitle. If you do have a subtitle, go ahead and enter it here. Uh, it's not required though. Okay, if you want to say your book is part of a series, you just check this box here, and then you give the series title, and then the volume. Now, the volume, you don't say book one, book two. You have to say uh, just a number, so one, two. So if this was, uh, let's say, the Mars series, let's say this was part of a trilogy, and we could say, and it's book two, you just type two like that. Okay, the edition number, that's if... Um, you're, the first time you publish a book, it's obviously the first edition, but if you make uh, extended revisions, it'd be the second, and then the third, and fourth, etc. Now, if you want to, you can just leave this blank, but if, uh, if this is, say, the second edition, just type the number, so two. Don't type second or, you know, 2ND, just type a number. Uh, the publisher, if you're a small press, obviously put your publishing company. If you're um, an indie author, um, you can either put your name or you can uh, make up, you know, a publishing company for yourself. So we'll just say this is the BBE Books. Uh, we'll call it BBE Books Publishing. Um, Amazon doesn't check if you're actually like a registered LLC or anything. So feel free to put whatever you want on there. It will show up on the product page. Now for the description, um, you get 4,000 characters. And this is what the actual... Uh, how your book is described on the product page. So it's very important that you have a well-written blurb and it's, you know, uh, enticing to readers who may potentially want to purchase your book. So uh, I've got a pre-made one here and I'm just going to go ahead and put that in. Um, now, uh, one advanced thing, if you want to do like uh, HTML tags, which will allow like for bold, underline, italicized formatting, uh, you can actually add these in. You just got to be careful. Um, so if I say I wanted to bold a Confederate veteran, I would add the tag, uh, B and then a closing bold tag. And say I wanted American Civil War to be italicized, I'd add an EM. And then go over here and add a closing EM. So American Civil War would appear as italicized. A Confederate vet veteran would appear as bold. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure you do paragraph level HTML formatting. So I'm going to put the opening and closing paragraph tags just like that. For more information uh, on uh, HTML formatting, please consult our website. Okay, the book contributors, you always have to add the author. So I'm going to click on Add Contributors. And I'm going to select Author. And this is going to be um, Edgar Rice, last name Burroughs. Now, if I wanted to add another one I could uh, there's unfortunately nothing for the formatter here not real happy about that but that's okay uh, say we had an editor 
and uh, we'll put myself as the editor there just as an example and uh, this will also show up on your uh, Kindle product page and it shows up there now remember you always have to add the author okay so language uh, this is pretty straightforward usually it'll be English but uh, you can pick from the drop down if you need to so I'm gonna choose English uh, ISBN now if you're if you have an ebook ISBN uh, make sure you enter the 13 digit ISBN don't enter any 10 digit I ISBNs I enter the 13 digit ISBN um, also your ISBN it's not gonna be the same ISBN if you have an ISBN for your print edition it has to be the digital ISBN uh, this book does not have an ISBN so I'm just gonna leave it blank not having an ISBN it's no problem at all uh, okay for your publishing rights you're always gonna check this is not a public domain work uh, for your categories you get two so you want to pick these this is important for Amazon's algorithms and how it like markets your book on the Amazon page and to you know within the Kindle ecosystem so I'm gonna select two here I'm gonna pick two science fiction ones we'll say science fiction general and alien contact um, so that's two uh, categories you only get two so make sure you pick them wisely you can always change these later if you like okay the age range and the US grade range that's only for um, if you're targeting your book to um, to children um, so if you have like a children's book or some sort of young adult book um, generally don't recommend uh, adjusting those if your book is uh, intended for adults so you can probably just leave those blank now the keywords you get seven they're very important uh, and it's actually they're more like key phrases because you can actually have more than more than one word to make up a keyword I know that's a bit confusing make sure to separate them with columns so science fiction would count as one keyword space opera would count as one etc okay now select your book release option this allows you if you are ready to publish right now just uh, I'm ready to release my book now if you're doing a pre-order you can go here and then you get the option of what date to select your release date and you can pick it's up to three to 90 days out they'll make the product page right away but uh, the book won't actually be sellable until the midnight of the release date you select so I'm just gonna make mine ready now now for uh, customers uploading dummy files or uh, like placeholder files for Amazon uh, make sure you have your final ebook ready at least 10 days before the pre-order date or you could potentially get in trouble with Amazon and they'll put you in pre-order jail um, okay for the cover I'm gonna click browse for image okay and then browse again and then it's gonna pull up uh, depending on whether you have a PC or Mac it'll pull up um, <coughs> you know your file structure and uh, I'm gonna open up a cover okay and that gets uploaded it takes it might take a bit we really don't recommend using the cover creator do yourself a favor and hire a professional cover designer um, upload your book file okay now you get the option to and and you want to just double check that your cover it's the right cover so that looks good okay uh, for digital rights management uh, I personally don't like digital rights management um, the the Kindle digital rights management has been cracked for many years um, and there's some software that you can find that will strip out the digital rights management and allow you to um, copy the book from one device to another but ostensibly digital rights management prevents um, unauthorized copying of your book but since pirates know how to crack it already I don't really see the point in it so I usually just do not enable because you know the nice old lady you know who wants to copy it onto her caliber program you know that's that's fine with me she already bought the book okay book content file so this is where you're gonna upload your um, prepared uh, Mobi file or if you're uploading a docx uh, you can do that here too so I'm gonna click browse and then I'm gonna find my Mobi now be careful don't upload the wrong file so okay Princess of Mars all right um, and while that uploads um, generally what you want to do um, we generally don't recommend you preview your Mobi online 
Um, you want to use the uh, installable software that you can get from Amazon for either PC or Mac to preview your Mobi file. Now for DocX, people who are uploading DocX files, Microsoft Word files, uh, you always want to check after it's gone through the conversion process and then you can download it and uh, check on the Kindle Previewer that way. Uh, once this gets converted, um, Amazon does this automatic spell checker thing. Um, it looks like uh, they didn't do it this time, but they usually do an automatic spell checker. And if there's any errors or typos and you're a client of ours, feel free to let us know what the typos are. We can go ahead and fix all your additions for you. Okay, so you can preview your book online. Oh, okay, so there are 10 possible spelling errors, uh, so we can view them. You can choose to ignore these, uh, so I'm just going to ignore all these, but you may want to take a look. Uh, sometimes the Amazon spell check is a little different than Microsoft Words and other word processing programs. It might actually catch a typo. You may, you and your editor may have missed. So I'm going to ignore all these. Okay. All right. So um, you can preview your book online. Let's see what that likes. Okay. Save changes. Um, it'll open up this uh, kind of GWiz online previewer thing. And uh, the, th the problem with the online previewer is it has a lot of bugs. Like sometimes the embedded fonts don't work. The embedded fonts worked in this case, but sometimes they don't for some reason. Um, so you can just go through. Generally, we recommend you use the Kindle previewing software to preview your Mobi file. But um, we just recommend doing a quick online check just to make sure you uploaded the right book because it has happened where people uploaded the wrong book and it went live and uh, bad things happen. So make sure you upload the correct book, okay? So I'm gonna go back to book details up in the corner there and then uh, all this stuff remains saved, so that's good. So I've, got, I've uploaded my cover, I've added all my metadata, so I'm gonna click save and continue. Okay, and then um, verify your publishing territories. Uh, generally, if you're small press or independent author, you don't have to worry about this. Just click on worldwide rights. It's only like the big publishing companies that have all these strange contractual obligations with the author. They can only publish in certain territories. Um, I, I just recommend leaving worldwide rights. Okay, now it gets interesting. So the pricing, uh, let's talk about this for a bit. Uh, you get two options, the 35% royalty and 70% royalty. Now you might ask, why wouldn't I always take the 70% royalty? That's more money for me. Well, uh, for the 35, the 70 percent royalty, you can only price between 2.99 and 9.99 uh, inclusive. Um, so if you say if you have, you wanted to do like a promo, you want to sell like a 99 cent ebook, uh, you couldn't do 70. You'd have to check 35. So you get more pricing options at 35. But uh, let's just do um, 70 percent, and then I'm gonna sell this for 2.99. Okay, and then uh, it's real neat. If you have all these checked at all the other Amazon stores, it'll automatically adjust the currency and all the weird VAT stuff in the European Union. Um, and it automatically sets the price. So we recommend, even if you're not American, just to set it, set it at the, the Amazon.com, the main U.S. price. And we always recommend uh, having it end in 99. It's just kind of standard ebook pricing practice. Now, you'll notice uh, over here this delivery cost. What's that all about? Okay, 0 0.08 cents. So instead of getting $2.12, I only get $2.04 because Amazon takes 0 0.08 cents. Why are they doing that? Well, because when you scroll down here, the delivery size, so your book's file size after conversion is about half a meg. So Amazon, for every meg, of the file delivery size, they'll actually deduct 15 cents. So at half a meg, it ends up being eight cents. Uh, Jeff Bezos, you know, he needs to build this space rocket and stuff. They need that money. So um, that's what's going on there. Now, if you have like a really big like book with lots of images and it's like 20 megs, you know, you probably want to go to the 35 percent, or else it might be uh, pr prohibitively expensive in terms of the royalty deduction due to the de de delivery cost. 35% royalty, no delivery cost. Okay, so I'm going to do 299. Okay.
okay go down here there's Kindle matchbook this is a program it was kind of more designed for you know the big publishers for readers who only read big publishers and they want to make the jump to ebook it allows if you've already bought the print edition and you want the ebook edition you get it at a discounted price it's not a, it's not a bad program so you can check on it if you want um, and then you can provide a price so if someone bought the print edition of this book they could get the ebook for 99 cents instead of you know three dollars okay uh, Kindle book lending so um, sometimes it, it checks this on default depending on whether or not you're in KU and whether you're um, based on your price but um, what Kindle lending allows it allows readers to lend it to other readers in the Kindle ecosystem for a period of two weeks um, it's actually not a not a bad idea um, if you're a new author and you're looking to get more discoverability and things like that okay and then uh, we're just about done so click on this button that's just said you read a bunch of legal stuff whatever and then you click on save and publish and usually it takes about about one to two days for your Amazon product page to go live uh, depending on you know they have to review your book and uh, review all your metadata and things like that so sometimes the book will actually go live in as short as six hours but um, uh, plan for about between one and two days and that's it thank you for your time